know your heart has been blessed already as we have had opportunity to think on the theme of that song and put it together with God's power and His availability to do something, make an impact. Today we're going to segue into our message entitled, Unexpected Jailbreak. You know, God is the one that sets prisoners free. And there may be an idea in your mind as you think about our topic today that somebody needs to be broken out of jail. Somebody needs the miraculous working of God in their heart. But I want to recommend to you that we all need it. We all do. We all need God to make the impact in our life that only He can do. There is a need, not just for somebody, but for us, for God to touch our heart. And as we look at our story today in the Bible, we're going to be turning into the book of Acts. But we think about the relevance of jailbreaks throughout history. The Internet will tell you that jailbreaks of a security prison are rare. If I was working in a high security prison, I would want people to believe that. And I think they are rare. But the kind of jailbreaks that we are delving into today are not rare. They're happening all the time. So I want you to think with me of the importance of a freedom that is experienced by those who are participating with, cooperating with the power of God in their life. That happens in unexpected places. And if you came to church or you're listening, you tuned in today with the thinking that that is unneeded today, I would like to suggest that you need to rethink that. That we need God miraculously intervening in our life. And He will go to great lengths to do that. Whatever is necessary will happen by the power of God so that you and I can be set free. Some of the jailbreak stories that I read about in years past, I was thinking over some of those. There are tremendous stories read, written. And I think a lot of them happened just the way that they said they were. I'm going to mention five. First of all, there was in the 18th century a guy named Jack Shepard. Jack Shepard was so well known for his jailbreaking abilities that whenever he was on trial, crowds would show up just to see how he would break out this time. And he did again and again, breaking through walls, picking locks. He must have had people helping him in the crowd. Eventually, again, as so many of them were, he was caught and re-caught and broke out, and re -caught. But finally, he was caught for the last time, and something in one of his plans didn't work out, and he was actually hung. Poor Jack Shepard. Secondly, this guy is interesting, Choi Gap Bok, 5'4", in stature, 50 years old, suspected and arrested for robbery. He was put in jail in South Korea. And there, in the space, reviewing the camera footage, the space of about a minute, he slathered his upper body with some type of lotion and escaped through the food slot. Let me check this out. Six inches by 17 inches in the food slot, he just wiggled through there like an octopus and escaped. He was gone for over a week until they finally recaptured him and they put him in a cell with, you guessed it, a smaller food slot. Incredible. Prison inspector Frank Abagnale, trying to get better treatment for prisoners, went in and escaped by convincing the prison guards that he was actually undercover FBI, which he was not. But somehow, he was able to outwit them, and he escaped. There was also Andrew Roger, Keith Rose, and Matthew Williams. They were caught as they planned to steal an airplane. But that was after they made a 25-foot ladder from prison materials. They made a master key. They made a gun all while in prison. Evidently, they couldn't make the airplane work, and they were recaptured. 
And then one of the other well-known prison escape stories was of brothers Clarence and John Anglin and Frank Morris. They made dummies and they put them in their beds. They fashioned together materials there they had at the prison, made a raft and escaped from Alcatraz Island. They finally had to give up looking for them as their bodies were never found. They are expected to have escaped as well. But of all the prison escape stories of all history, none were so daring, none were so well-engineered, none were so powerful as our story we're looking at today. Again, God's intent for each one of us is that we too would be set free. Acts chapter 16, and beginning in verse 13, we have an introduction to background of our story. Acts chapter 16, beginning in verse 13. One of the thoughts that comes to mind in the thinking of jailbreaks is this quote from the book Steps to Christ. And I want to put an advertisement for our prayer meeting. We have had a lot of people show up to prayer meeting off and on to the subject, and I believe some are studying at home as well. The little book, Steps to Christ. Wonderful book. But here, written on page 95, is this quote. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse, where are treasured the boundless resources of omnipotence. Prayer is an opportunity for us. It's the key in the hand of faith to unlock heaven's storehouse. Do you want more answers to prayer? Do you want more blessings? Do you want God's power, His boundless resources in the storehouse of heaven opened up for you. Prayer is the key in the hand of faith. There were some people gathering together, Acts chapter 16 and verse 13. They were doing so on a regular basis. The Bible tells us there that on the Sabbath day, we went to the city of the riverside where prayer was customarily made. You don't do something customarily if you're hit and miss. And we have opportunity to be so connected with God that it is our custom to do some things, to prayer, to praise, to, to worship God. These people were meeting there by the riverside. Now that's a church setting I would like to visit. There they were. And it tells us there they sat down and spoke there with the people gathered there. Verse 14, certain woman named Lydia heard. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira and worshipped God. And the Lord opened her heart to heed things spoken by Paul. First jailbreak in the series of jailbreaks in our time together is the heart of Lydia. She heard the word that's spoken. Her heart was opened. And the Bible tells us that she was baptized. Acts chapter 2 gives us the important connection that when people were baptized, they joined the church. Something happened in their heart and it was desire not only for salvation and for freedom in their heart, but they wanted to bless people with the good news gospel message as well. There she was baptized. She was added to the church. The group of people there that were praying by the river, Lydia's name is the first in the series of jailbreaks. As again, the word is spoken. And her heart responds to the word of God. She's baptized. She turns her life over to Jesus as Lord and Savior. Continuing on, we see next in the passage that beginning in verse um, 16, it happens there that when they went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master's, quote, much profit by her fortune teller. Does this young girl need to be broke out? You know, again, as you think about things that you witness, things that you hear, things that you see, sometimes there is an obvious need that appears. And we say, you know what? There's somebody that needs to be broken out from the slavery that this devil is initiating on this girl's life. I mean, if you saw this girl, you knew what she was doing, telling fortunes. The Bible tells us she was a slave. You know she needs to be set free, right? But the reality is, again, God is calling us to recognize the reality that we too need to be set free for some things in our heart. We cannot see one another's heart, but God can. More importantly, God can do the unlocking, the jailbreaking of the slavery, of the thinking, of the feelings, of the attitudes, all those things that are at war in our heart. God can set us free from that. For this girl here, she's participating in the telling of fortunes. You know, people turn some strange places to look for guidance in this life. 
I wish that was an old thing, but it's not. People are still doing that. And we are not safe to take one step in the wrong direction apart from God's guidance and counsel. The majority does not have the answer. That's not where to look. Our own feelings, that's not the safe place to look. The Bible tells us our heart is deceitfully wicked. Deceitful. We, we trick ourselves. We need God's guidance in our life. That's the only safe course, the only safe pathway for us. This girl tells us there that it's continuing on. She was following Paul and us and cried out saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God. Now that's a true statement. They were servants of the Most High God, the only God. She was making a statement that had been uttered before. Remember, there was people there in church as Jesus was speaking. And the spirit that was not a good spirit was actually uttering some true words. This man, this, this Jesus, it tells us there that the, it gives us the record, the spirits, the unclean spirits, they knew who Jesus was, but they were creating distraction. And as they followed Paul and us, again, the writer of the book of Acts, as he's recording the story, they note that this presence of this girl is following them all through town. And she's saying they are the servants of the Most High God and God, and they tell you the way to salvation. What's curious is the message that she's speaking that's true, she is not participating in herself. She needs the message that she is sharing. She needs the message of salvation realized in her life. She needs to be set free. The Bible tells us very plainly, she's a slave. She's working for her masters for much profit. Listen, the masters need to be set free too. They could be. If your hope is only in, quote, much profit, you don't have much hope at all. We all need to look forward to the salvation and accept and experience the salvation of Jesus that was being talked about there. It tells us there that She did this for many days. I don't know how long it went on, but finally got to the place that says, but Paul, greatly annoyed. Don't you love the honesty of the Bible? Can you imagine Paul? I mean, he does a lot of great Bible writing. He finally, he gets greatly annoyed. And I think by inspiration turns to her and said, verse 18, Acts chapter 16, verse 18, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Okay? And he came out that very hour. We've got to be remembering the absolute power and authority of Jesus. Never forget that. There is never a situation too bleak that you or your loved one, the one you're praying for, any of us cannot be broken out and set free. Come out. And she was set free. The Bible continues, when her master saw that Their hope of profit, that's no hope at all, was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Now, at this time in the story, I'm thinking that their prayer life was elevated to the next level. Do you know what it feels like to be dragged anywhere? I would dare say most of us don't. But let me tell you, they were not there by mistake. They were not experiencing this by mistake. This was not happening to them without awareness of the possibility. Acts chapter 4. Please turn there as we break from this story and go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 tells us a little bit of the thinking of these gentlemen as they're sharing the gospel message around the world. I think we are ambitious from time to time about the serving we would like to do because we do not understand what the calling is really about. It starts with a prayer. It starts with a conviction that God is calling us to do something to make a difference for eternity. It's not about our comfort. It's not about our honor. It's not about appreciation. It's about a mission that must go forward that's bigger than any of us and bigger than all of us. Acts chapter 4. Let's turn there. It says in verse 12, this was the message that they were preaching. People didn't like it. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name among heaven given among men by which we, quote, must be saved. Did you hear that? We must be saved. We are in need of a Savior. It's not just somebody in a foreign land that needs salvation. You and I must be saved. And there's 